Hey everyone, it's Benicia, your Community Outreach Specialist, and today I'm bringing you a very important special video. I realize that I'm pretty sure I say that in every single intro, um, but this one is definitely going to be a long one. Um, there's a lot of information that's going to be thrown at you guys, so we are here at Pasco ASAP, and ASAP actually stands for the Alliance for Substance Abuse Prevention of Pasco. Um, so we're going to be meeting with three women from that work with this coalition and we're going to be talking about the substance abuse issue not only in Pasco but how you could take the same information to your own community if you recognize that this is something that you know you do need to bring to the forefront and how you can go from there. So if you guys learn anything today, one or two things, um, I'll have done my job for the day. So. Everyone, I am here with Chrissy and Monica from ASAP Pasco. That's how you say it, correct? Yes. ASAP Pasco, which actually stands for the Alliance of Substance Abuse Prevention. Very good. Oh, kill them in the game. Okay, <laughs> so they actually do a lot for ASAP Pasco, but they're both going to kind of talk to us about what they do in the county, our partnership, you know, with Pasco Sheriff's Office, and just give us the rundown so that you guys, if you're looking or you have anyone in the family that you, you know, may want to try to help out or you just want the information, that you can do so. Whether or not you're local or out of state, this could benefit all of you, so. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, first things first, we're a coalition, which basically means that we're a group of people who come together to solve our community's biggest problems as it relates to substance use, substance misuse, and substance use disorders. So, we rely on community partnerships, which is why we love hanging out with the Pasco Sheriff's Office so often. Um, so, from teachers, the school board, sheriff's office, youth, uh, parents, you name it, we, everyone comes together to solve some of our biggest issues. I love that. Yeah. So, that's a little bit of a breakdown of what ASAP does in the county. So I know you guys have different programs and whatnot. Like I know I've actually dealt with a couple of your members before because as you guys know, I was a CPI. So I used to investigate child abuse and child neglect and I know that you guys do work with a lot of parents. You do work with a lot of kids as well. Mm -hmm. How are you, let's just start, how are you working with kids in the county? Like how, because I mean a lot of times you don't think that kids will have a substance abuse problem, whether mm -hmm. or not they're born dependent or if they just, you know, get older and just fall into that sort of crowd, mm -hmm. what's the role that you guys can play to kind of help or do, or how would you, you know, do you... So I, I would say we play multiple roles. Okay. One of the um, our strongest components of the coalition is the Safe Teens Against Drugs, so our STAND okay. initiative, Safe where we're really um, building leadership skills of mm -hmm. teens and building a coalition of youth leaders that are working with their community and their school to make their um, community level change or okay. school level change of what they see as an issue. Okay. Um, so that's one of the ways that we're building up our children mm -hmm. and Love our that. youth perspective. They are and just future. to kind of piggyback off of that, in the last year and a half, our stand youth has have really evolved. So in the past, they were really the youth leaders who wanted to get ahead of this issue, you know, seeing their peers and seeing their community becoming um, more and more disrupted by mm -hmm. substance use. And in the last year and a half, we've had a lot of students who are in recovery themselves or That's have struggled awesome. with addiction themselves and really brings to light this, this huge issue that there are not a lot of resources for young people with mm -hmm. addiction. Um, a lot of the times as parents, we think that kids are going through a phase and we don't recognize it or hold it to the mm -hmm. same severity as an adult who's struggling with a substance use disorder. So they really brought that to light. You know, they don't feel like they can go to the same 12 step meetings as adults because mm -hmm. they're not taken seriously. Even young adults, people who are 20, 21, don't feel like they can go to an AA meeting and mm -hmm. say, I'm an alcoholic because people who are 45, 60 say, what? You know, like you're it's, not really, so yeah, they feel very stigmatized time. even yeah. within, yeah, even within the, That's within with that, um, the, the, that support system, they feel stigmatized. So. And that's called the STAND program. You guys yep. have STAND. Mm -hmm. Okay. So 
Guys, throughout this video, just flashing information at you. There will be information about the stand program as well. Hopefully, I, I'm obviously in different counties across you know America, wherever you are watching this video, I'm sure you may have a program like it. I don't know if stand is just local for us. It's not like a cross state lines type of program. It's not, but there okay. are youth coalitions and mm -hmm. coalitions like ours or similar to ours uh, across the state okay. and across the United States. Okay. So we can definitely send information on how to find okay. those. Boom. Yeah. I will help you guys out with that as well. What other kind of programs do you guys have? Because I know you guys do a lot. We do a lot. You do, we do, you a, guys lot. do a lot. Well, and to kind of uh, stay on the topic of, of youth, you know, Chrissy and I don't know if we want to bring in Missy to kind of talk about substance exposed newborns. Before you we guys switch want gears. us to bring in Missy? <laughs> Let's bring in Missy. <laughs> da, 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 da. Give us a wave, Missy. <gasps> Boom. We've added another. We have Missy with us. And M Missy, what's your role with ASAP? So I am actually a um, committee chair for the Substance, okay. Substance Exposed Newborn Committee. Okay. And um, basically, um, we're a group um, in the community that's come together um, with different community partners, whether it would be, um, we have some law enforcement, mm -hmm. we have um, other facilities um, that actually specialize in substance abuse mm -hmm. or treatments. Um, just Any? across the board, we have um, many community partners. Okay, it, like would one be, would one be Bay Care? Would, is that mm -hmm. yes. Okay, okay, so <laughs> I, I was like, okay, okay, just so that we can, so uh, for those of you that don't, Bay Care's, um, when we have any individuals or when you guys watch tweet alongs and an individual is being Baker acted and they're transported to Baycare, that's the facility that I just was referring to just to mm -hmm. get an idea. Yes, definitely. Mm -hmm. So um, Baycare plays like a big role in, you know, assisting with treatment and stuff mm -hmm. in the community um, because we do have funding for um, people who have no insurance or okay. um, stuff like that who still awesome, need though. substance abuse care. So our substance abuse newborn um, committee, we meet like monthly. And um, one of the things that we've actually um, composed is a quick reference guide for um, pregnant women mm -hmm. and um, who are actually on methadone. And it's like the need to know, things okay. they need to know, things they can expect mm -hmm. whenever and before they deliver and while they're pregnant and after. So I mean, stigma engaging parents into um, treatment. the treatment okay. and recovery and also what to expect if the CPI is called, mm -hmm. if DCF does get involved. Exactly. So that's one of the big things is, you know, helping them be prepared. Mm -hmm. um, they're already, you know, going to be having lots of anxiety and stuff about childbirth, but exactly. whenever um, they want to ask for treatment, mm -hmm. if they are, you know, using a substance and to prepare them and stuff, you know, for what may come. Mm -hmm. And um, just really to give them information and guidance along okay. the way. So is it more so for the parent and not for, because if you, if you have a mother that's on methadone, gets pregnant, it's, isn't it almost all the time that the baby's gonna be dependent? So any, um, any opioid that the mother is taking, mm -hmm. the risk is high, high. for having mm -hmm. a child being born dependent mm -hmm. to opioids. Okay. The, the goal is to make sure that a mother feels comfortable asking for that treatment help mm -hmm. and not mm -hmm. being so scared and continuing to use illicitly if okay. that is Definitely. her method of choice because that is very, very risky. So okay. by being able to encourage people to ask for help and get treatment, we can reduce that risk and make sure that there are the least amount of complications possible. Oh, awesome. Okay. Definitely. So then how do, uh, I, this may be completely left field, how do individuals find ASAP? Is it through like different entities? Or, yeah. Like, yeah, well, people like you, you? <laughs> like you on videos yeah. like this. I'm awesome. <laughs> I have to toot my own horn. But, <laughs> so how, but uh, if they, is it, it, I don't think, ASAP's not like a, like a part, like something that a judge will require, like someone no. to, to, okay, no, no nothing so we're of that really, sort. We're like a okay. planning group. So we, okay. we do okay. a lot of, so we, we're a community strategy group. We're just people who come together, look at data, see mm -hmm. what's the biggest trends in the, in the area 
then we look to evidence-based strategies on and what we can do. What, what evidence-based mm -hmm. strategies can we deploy as a community okay. to reduce risk and really change these statistics that we're seeing? Okay. So we don't really provide direct services. I mean, we, pr we provide a lot of information. We, mm -hmm. pr we do a lot of service in the community, mm -hmm. but nobody's going to be referred to ASAP for Got you. service okay, or okay. anything like, quite like that. Okay. But we do have community partners like BayCare, like BASE, like YFA, um, who oh, are with the exactly. are, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, but to get back to your question, how do people hear about us? I mean, we started 11 years ago as a mm -hmm. grassroots uh, kind of mm -hmm. program. Uh, so people just kind of know about us word of mouth, mm -hmm. and uh, That's I mean, the we best. have social media exactly, too, which is so great. We do have but Facebook, so. word of mouth, I feel yes. like will always top social media. But yeah. I still love my social media. Yeah, <laughs> my job. <laughs>